Hey everybody, this is Modern Refugee, having a little coffee this morning, and I thought I'd take a uh, few minutes to have a conversation with you guys about my um, uh, bug out bag overnight that I did a uh, few days back. Um, kind of tell you what worked, what didn't work, um, kind of some tips and some things uh, that I think are important for you guys to uh, know. Um, I will put a link in the description for that uh, overnight uh bug out bag video if you guys uh, haven't seen that and I will also um, put a link in the description for the original uh, winter get home bag bug out bag video that I did here a little while back to show you what I actually had in this uh, pack right here I've had had a little bit of time now to dry everything out put everything back in my pack get everything repacked so I thought this is a perfect opportunity to talk to you guys and um, let you guys know a few things now I put in the description of that uh, overnight uh, bug out bag video that I did, never go out um, without proper clothing and gear and always tell a competent person uh, where you're going and when you're going to be back. That is uh, the cardinal rule of any hiking or outdoor outing. That way, if you don't show up on time, something goes wrong, a competent person can notify uh, the right people to come and help you out and find out what's going on. This is very important. I do this around here when I'm just, you know, kind of hiking in my own backyard in my own area. I also do it, you know, when we go way up north um, into the big wilderness of uh, Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Um, you know, I've done all kinds of different things to uh, tell people hey, we're going somewhere, keep an eye on things, and if we don't show up at a certain time, you know, call somebody. doesn't matter whether we went to the Sturgeon Gorge Wilderness, whether we were going up to Mount Arvon, if, uh, you know, we were going to the Blind 35, we were hiking anywhere in the Pictured Rocks, like Beaver Basin Wilderness. And I'll give you a perfect example. When we hiked to Beaver Basin Wilderness um, back in the spring, of course, you know, I'm up there, I don't know anybody. So I went to the uh, gal at the... Um, hotel desk and I said hey I said you guys gonna be here of course I already struck a conversation up with her ahead of time but uh I said uh hey you gonna be here all day and she goes yeah I'm gonna be here till seven eight o'clock tonight I said can you keep an eye out for us uh we're gonna go hiking for a few hours and uh, if we're not back here like by six o'clock something's wrong would you guys call uh Alger County Sheriff Department for us and say hey we got some hikers that didn't uh, check in just in case something went wrong and I went and I actually had some donuts that I bought and I gave her a couple of donuts I said here's some donuts thanks I appreciate that that little bit right there can be you know can be a lifesaver if something goes wrong and uh, about the proper gear and equipment a few years back we were hiking the Chapel Falls Loop which is about between 9 and 12 miles depending on which way that you do it and we were probably seven miles into it and all of a sudden this dude walked past us carrying a half a bottle of Mountain Dew he was in a windbreaker and he was wearing you know clean shirt nice blue jeans oh hi and he walks past us and I looked at my you know fellow hikers uh, I had with me and I'm like I sure hope we don't have to go looking for that guy later tonight because he ain't ready for this out here at all and it was fairly chilly and it was fairly damp that day we were out there if he would have got caught out with what he had on and nothing nothing with him, oh, man, that would have been bad news all the way around. So you want to have, you know, your proper clothing and gear, and you want to uh, notify somebody uh, where you're going, when you're going to be back, even if that means you got to bribe the gal at the... Um, at the hotel counter with donuts, you know. you got to do what you got to do. Now, um, as far as my trip goes, I had my clothing on. Um, I had decent clothing on when I went out there. Really didn't have any problems with my clothing. I didn't work hard enough to work up a sweat, and that's the main thing when you're going out for something like that. If you sweat up, you really should have some other T-shirts and stuff where you can change that stuff out because if you sweat up a T-shirt or something, that's, that's all bad. If you feel your stuff... stuff yourself starting to um, sweat you want to stop what you're doing you want to open your shirt and stuff up you want to let air in there you want to cool off you do not want to sweat and that gets to my uh, uh, boots shoes socks um, I sleep in my boots that's gonna sound really weird but I'm an old guy I got bad knees and putting on boots sitting in a hammock or a tent putting those boots on taking them off in the middle of the night, in the dark, I, I just don't like that. I'd rather just sleep in my clothes and my boots and is something uh, 
something causes me to have to get up in the middle of the night, tend the fire, whatever, I don't have to mess around. It's a little bit more of a pain in the ass to get back down in the bag, but it's kind of a trade-off. Um, I have slept without boots and shoes and stuff already, and I you know, kind of change my sleeping stuff around, and I find it's just easier. As long as you're not soaking wet, I find it's just easier for me personally to just sleep in my clothes, and that's just how I do it. Now, the one exception of that is my socks. Um, last year when we went out, my feet got a little bit damp uh, because it was pretty snowy and damp outside. So what I did about an hour, hour and a half before I went um, to bed, I took my boots off, put them by the fire so they could dry out, and I changed my socks. And I just sat with my feet up by the fire with those dry socks on, let my feet warm back up decent. And uh, then when I was ready to turn in, my boots had dried off. I put my uh, dry socks back in my dry boots, and you know I went to bed, and uh, that actually worked out really well. Didn't have any problems with cold feet or anything during the night. But uh, if you think you might have damp socks, you want to change them before um, you go to bed at night. You don't want to go to bed with damp socks because you will wake up with cold feet. So that's just how I do it. I don't know if that's a textbook uh, or not, but that's just exactly how I. Um, do it now as far as gear i had a couple things that uh kind of messed up none of them were uh, major the first one was my under quilt goes underneath my um hammock and eclipse with two small carabiners i lost one of those carabiners don't know how i lost it but it was just gone when i pulled everything out of my pack i did find it when i was packing back my stuff later but without that carabiner to hold that on um to my hammock I would have had to rig something else up to hold that in place I always carry a spare carabiner or two on different things I got one on my mallet I think I got a, another one inside on something else but what I do is, is I'll have a carabiner that I usually hook onto one of my uh, little twine or cord bundles and that way I always got a spare carabiner just for something like that and that actually uh, was kind of nice I said oh I can't find that I'm just gonna go whip out another uh, I'm going to whip that carabiner off that uh, string there, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, put that on my hammock, put my underquilt up, didn't have no problems. The second thing, I took a secondary light with me. Um, the reason I took a secondary light with me, of course, because I was making a YouTube video, so I had to have light if I wanted to show something in the dark or whatever. So I uh, took this guy right here. This is my primary light. I had no problems with this guy whatsoever. I actually used both of these, but this guy, in the middle of the night, when I was using it one time, decided for whatever reason to come apart. Um, so yeah, that was kind of a mess up. Even though this was my secondary light, that bothered me. I got a couple of lights that are exactly like this. So this guy will not go back out in the woods unless I put some kind of tape around this edge right here, a thin couple wraps of tape to hold this all in place on that little detachable bracket hinge, whatever that is. So uh, that's another thing that kind of uh, screwed up. That was probably the worst. If this was the only light that I had and I dropped that light and for some reason I couldn't find it or whatever, or that dropped in the, like a river or something when I was getting water, that would have sucked. So um, yeah, so that's one of those things that just happens. Um, another thing, I had bibs on like I showed you guys in that other video. I didn't have any pants or belt or anything on. So what I did was is I actually moved my main knife here. I do have a dangler on this so I can put on a belt if I want to. But I actually uh, slipped this guy right here through the uh, molly webbing on my uh, pack to hold this guy in place and right in front here where I can grab it because I had it hanging by my uh, sleeping arrangement. That also worked really well for me. I kind of liked that. It was uh, convenient. I kind of had it just hanging on the side at first, and I said, you know what, I'm going to snap it in these uh, molly uh, webs here, and that actually worked even better because a bulk of majority of the knife is behind the little beaver tail here, and it's all good. Um, one thing that I wish I would have had that I didn't have, I didn't take it along. I do take it along a lot of times when I go out. Um, I usually have one in my truck or something something nearby um, but I just was trying to save weight and uh, it wasn't uh, in my original setup so I never took one and uh, what that was is a shovel I really missed my shovel this time around so I might uh, decide to take a shovel with me I had a couple people in the comments of uh, my original uh, 
uh, bug out bag, winter bug out bag video, say, oh, you should have an ax, you should have this. Well, I decided I wasn't going to take any of that because I figured, you know, I'm going to see what I can do with just my camp knife and uh, my mallet and call it good. Well, a shovel is kind of like an ax. It's nice to have, but it's also weights more to carry, so I never took it. But it kind of sucked. I wish I would have had it. Now, my two shovels are right here. And what these guys are are just... They're what's called a floral shovel. They are a small little shovel. And all I do is cut the handle off and I put a piece of ranger band on the end so I got myself a uh, grip. And these guys right here are basically a poor man's Spetsnaz shovel. And uh, I actually use these quite a bit even around the house here. But I wish I would have had one of them. It would have been nice to move coals around in the fire and scrape snow away from stuff. It would have been nice to have one of those. Didn't have one of those. So I just kind of had to use my boot and kick snow out of the way and kind of do it redneck style. But uh, I wish I would have had that with me. That's one thing that, uh, looking back, it would have been nice if I would have took that along. But I didn't. So uh, I had to live without it. But um, that's one, one other thing that I wanted to mention. And my uh, jug of water. I took a jug of water with me out there. I used about two quarts of water for that uh, period of time that I was out there. And uh, as far as food, I uh, ate one MRE. I had a Lara bar. I had three packets of cider mix and two packets of coffee. That's what I used for that uh, 24 hours, actually a little bit over 24 hour period that uh, we were out there. Um, my water, I didn't want my water to freeze. So I set my water bottle close to the fire, but not so close to the fire that it would have melted my um, um, jug so I wanted it kind of just above freezing and it was basically kind of right underneath my uh, hammock where I had uh, that set up and actually the um, fire actually melted kind of a, a ring around the fire where it had melted the snow and this was actually kind of sort of at the edge of that so that was actually a really good spot that I had uh, uh, place that water so I had a few ice crystals in that uh, water jug but I didn't it didn't freeze solid and there's been other times when I have had water um, free solid so uh that's uh you know basically the skinny on uh on my um overnight uh with my uh bug out bag here uh, my mallet was really nice of course i didn't have to fashion myself one i already had one with me because i decided i was gonna start taking a mallet with me because of just so much that i use it um you know of course you can always fashion one when you're out there but uh that takes time too time that could be better served collecting firewood and that kind of stuff and that gets to fire you know fire is kind of your most important um skill to know and have when you're out there i'm no expert in anything um but i try to know what i can about making fires now i I've never made a bow drill fire. I, I've tried. I suck at it. I got bad knees, so I don't even kind of consider that. I uh, Maybe at some point in time I'll get that perfected for somebody with bad knees, but at this point in time I just uh, stick to the basics, you know, lighter ferro rod, um, making sure that my uh, my tinder and stuff is processed correctly so I can you know, go ahead and start a fire as quickly. Know, knowing what to look for, you know, on top of my fire kit that I uh, had in the pack here. And I didn't have any problems really starting a fire and uh, getting things going. But fire is just so important because literally if you don't have much, if you can start and maintain a fire, you can, uh, you can stay warm, you can boil your water, you can dry your clothes, you can signal for help. It's just kind of the... In my opinion, it's kind of the most important skill that you can possibly have when you're out there is being able to start and maintain a fire in whatever condition or wherever that you live at. You know, your local conditions is probably where you're going to use these skills the most, so that's really where you need to practice. And me up here in the north, um, in the snow and the cold is going to be different from people in other parts of the world and other parts of the country, but it's just so important to know that, so it's something that's really important to practice. But anyway, I just want to take a few minutes to talk to you guys about my... Uh, little uh overnight adventure that i had talk about my gear as far as my gear and stuff um when i came back i turned all my bags inside out so they could dry out shook all the sand and dirt out of them somehow i collected about a pound of sand in the bottom of my hammock but it didn't really bother me uh, but i noticed that when i uh, pulled my stuff down whenever you come back um from a trip like that you want to air all your stuff out you want to hang your uh, pack out with you know open up so air can get in there and it can dry out otherwise you might get mold or mildew or anything like that and of course this stuff costs money so you don't want it to go to shit on you so uh you know i bring my bags in turn my bags inside out let them dry out good and uh about two three days later then uh 
after everything's dried out, you can pack everything back up. But anyway, it's Modern Refugee. Appreciate all my subscribers out there. Hope you guys got a little information, a little entertainment out of this video here. Just sharing my experience with you guys. I hope you guys have a good one.